What's going on everybody? This is Living in Arizona Now and today we are going to take a look at some of the most secluded towns in Arizona. Now there are many areas in Arizona that are secluded, but we did pick a few to highlight here. Let's begin. First up on the list, we're going to head up above the Mogollon Rim here to Heber Overguard. Heber is up above a mile high, sitting around 6,600 feet. The population is about 3,000 people over the area of Heber Overguard. Now when we add Heber Overguard to the list of being secluded, this is the reason why. The closest big city is Phoenix, three hours away. Flagstaff, two hours away. Payson, which is a small town, just about under 10,000 people, also an hour away. Sholo, 45 minutes away, and that's not even a big city. So you can see Hebrew Overguard definitely secluded. The town itself was set up as a Mormon settlement along the Little Colorado River Basin, and that's how it ended up being established by the name of Brigham City. Now one of the benefits of checking out this area around Heber Overguard is the amount of property you get for the price. So you get a lot of bang for your buck for property value out here. You can see the terrain and the downtown area along the highway here. Not too filled in, very uh, spread out, just how you like it when you're looking for a uh, secluded town. And you could see the types of houses are out here are going to be wooden cabins, mobile homes, farmland, and you'll also get RVs out here. Just goes to show not all of Arizona is desert. All right, heading down south now. Next up on the list, Tombstone, Arizona. Yes, the world famous Tombstone where the famous OK Corral gunfight took place between Doc Holliday, Wyatt Earp, and some bandits back in the day. Now even though Tombstone is world famous and well known, it still has not taken on international notoriety as a place to live. Now one thing I will say, it is a beautiful countryside and terrain out here, so it is surprising that it has not grown. You could still live out here and not see any of the modern conveniences. The closest big city is going to be Tucson. Now Tombstone was originally set up as an old silver mining campment, okay, by Ed Shefflin. So he's the one who named the town and the reason they call it Tombstone was because of the old soldier's warning. The only thing you're going to find in Tombstone is your tombstone. It was quite the wild west back in those days between the Apache Raiders and even the environment in and of itself going into silver mines was not considered a very safe job. But even worse than all those was the actual locals who would get drunk at the saloons and then they would just choose to settle their squabbles and their disputes over an old fashioned gunfight. But nowadays, have no fear, Tombstone is much more tame and relaxed than the old days. Out here, it is actually a place that people from Arizona go just to relax because it is so tame and relaxing out in this beautiful countryside. Most notably known for horseback riding. Now heading back up north and east towards New Mexico, we come across Springerville, also known as Eager Springerville. All right, so you can see this very high alpine dry area here is actually secluded, very secluded. This might be one of the most secluded towns on the entire list. Located out in Apache County within the White Mountains, the population is around 2,000 people. Actually, the elevation is almost 7,000 feet. As a matter of fact, nearby Springerville, the old western classic actor John Wayne had a piece of property out here 
in Springerville and Eager area. I'm not going to tell you exactly where. You can find that out when you come out here. But you could tell he liked to be secluded, and that's why he chose out here along the Arizona-New Mexico border in Springerville. All right, next up, we're going to head back down towards southern Arizona and towards the southwest part of the state to Patagonia. What a great name, right? Now, if I had to say any place on this list that had the best weather, I would say probably Patagonia. Doesn't get too hot. It doesn't get too cold. It's just right. Almost four seasons, high elevation. There is a uh, lake nearby. People like this area of Patagonia. Uh, it's got beautiful views of mountains. It's close to Mexico, but not too close. Patagonia is a great place. Also, if this is your first time to living in Arizona, please consider liking the video and subscribing if you guys are enjoying this one so far. The population is actually just under a thousand people, so it's not very developed. In fact, the closest town, I guess if you wanted to call it that, or the closest city would be Nogales. Uh, as far as getting to Tucson or Sierra Vista, it is a huck. This place truly is secluded. Just to give you some idea of the geography and the topography out here, yes, it is lush, but you know what's nearby? The wineries of Southern Arizona. So that tells you the grapes grow really nicely in this region. And as we zoom out here, you get this aerial perspective of all the mountains in the background showing you just how spectacular and majestic it truly is down here in Patagonia. Now, don't everyone move down here all at once, please. The locals will not be happy about that. Actually, the lake that I was telling you about, here's an aerial shot with Mount Wrightson in the background. Now just up the road a bit from Tombstone, and you could say from Patagonia, is Safford, another truly isolated and secluded town in between Phoenix and New Mexico, but it sits at the base of Mount Graham, which is one of the tallest mountain peaks in all of the state of Arizona. Now the population of Safford is around 10,000 people, which is one of the biggest cities on this list, but if you take into consideration how far it is away from Tucson and or Phoenix, several hours away, actually closest big city if you wanted to call it that would probably be Tucson now Globe Miami is up the road but that's not a big city one thing you'll notice about these isolated and secluded towns around Arizona is they are former boom towns at one point in time Tombstone was one of the biggest in the country Safford was another one of the boom towns in Arizona but since then, it has fizzled out, so you'll see a lot of the old buildings still in place in the downtown areas like you're seeing right here in downtown Safford. And just a reminder, if you're still watching this video and enjoying what you're seeing, please do consider liking this video and subscribing to this channel as we continue to show you guys around these secluded areas of Arizona where you can consider looking at property.
And next up, we're headed back up north of Phoenix now, just south of Prescott, about an hour south, to Yarnell. Now, for those of you who watched the movie Hot Shots, this is actually where the video uh, plot takes place at the fire in Yarnell. And they have a monument dedicated to the firefighters who fought for the Hot Shots to put out that fire. Now the population of Yarnell is around 700 people and the economy is basically revolving around ranching and mining services. Not too much going on in Yarnell, but lots of wide open space and that's why it's a great place to go for seclusion. By the way, they did find gold in Yarnell in 1865. In fact, nearby Yarnell is one of the best areas to mine gold in all of Arizona at an industrial level. Now this is our furthest west town that we have. It's called Salome, Arizona. You'll catch up with this place driving from Wickenburg, Phoenix towards Lake Havasu City. It is on the old historic Route 60. Now the entire population of Salome is 1,500 people and it's mostly a farming community. They grow a lot of nuts out here but they grow more than just nuts out here. So it is a farming agricultural area for those of you who are looking for something along the lines of farming and ag. And last but not least, Oracle, Arizona, where the biosphere is, you can see sitting at the northern slopes of Mount Lemmon. Now, Oracle does have a population of 3,600, and it is an old uh, gold and silver mining town where prospectors originally settled, just north of Tucson and Oro Valley, like I said. It's a really beautiful place. Uh, I do recommend this area. It is closer to Tucson and actually this is probably one of the least secluded but still a secluded place on the list. There's a beautiful state park nearby so definitely check out Oracle if you're looking for something secluded uh, near a mountain like Mount Lemmon, one of the best uh, mountain ranges or mountain slopes you can find in the state of Arizona known as the Santa Catalinas. So anyways, guys, thanks for watching this episode of Secluded Towns. Watch some of these other videos on living in Arizona. If you guys like moving out here or living in Arizona and you're looking for uh, cool information, we got it for you. See you on the next one.